Thank you, Mr. Deputy Speaker. I would have been a little more competent if you were sitting next to me. Uh, Mr. Deputy Speaker, if you would permit me to extend deepest sympathies to a few people from my community. Basil has been very, very active in the community of Shuzel recently. In fact, I think around St. Lucia and, um, you know, spreading some serious um, cheers. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Deputy Speaker, I wish to extend deeper sympathies to the family of Mary Joycelyn Popo of La Pointe Living Industry, who served as a teacher and a health aide, was a very active a shop steward of the National Workers Union, a former director of St. Jude's, and was very active up until her death at the Delce Choir. I also would like to extend deepest sympathies to the family of Murphy Gittins Hippolyte, retired fire officer 283, also known as Murphy Shorty Babwire and Free Agent. Also want to extend deeper sympathies to Michael Nixon, originally of Roblo, living in Soze, contractor of Shuzel. May the souls rest in peace. Mr. Speaker, as I begin my contribution, I wish to begin by reciting two lines from a reggae artist. I won't be singing, Mr. Speaker. We, today we bless the sunshine. When you wake up this morning, you better give thanks because you don't know if you're going to live to see tomorrow. Unquote. Mr. Speaker, we are living in some serious and uncertain times. And the time is now to make peace with our family, neighbors, and friends. There is nothing more liberating than a clear conscience. Mr. Speaker, Allow me to thank the people of Shuzel Saldibus for the unwavering continued vote of confidence in my representation and for the numerous messages of courage, prayer, and hope. My foremost duty is to represent all in the community and to continue to seek for our advancement physically, socially, and economically. Mr. Deputy Speaker, when we come to this house, had it been Mr. Speaker, I would have said, he normally refers it to his house. Our, 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 what we should really be doing when we come to this house, Mr. Speaker, we really should be here for one purpose and objective. Foremost in our minds, Mr. Speaker, and I wish to, to, to make a quote which I believe came popular during the COVID season. Foremost in our lives should be, in our minds should be the lives and livelihoods of our people and the stability of our country. As parliamentary representative for Shuzel Saldivas for a second term, albeit now in opposition, the various experiences are invaluable. Mr. Speaker, experiences of frustration when there is so much you would like to see continued in your community, which is at a standpoint. Experiences of painfulness, Mr. Speaker, when you recognize the glaring acts of victimization. Experience, Mr. Speaker, of confusion when you hear members speak with forked tongues. And also the experiences of hopefulness and faith when your community embraces you daily and thank you for setting standards for others to emulate. I will respond, Mr. Speaker, to this budget based on these experiences. Mr. Speaker, you will also forgive me if I am repetitive in some areas, but sometimes things are worth repeating. Mr. Speaker, I really long for the day when ministers would acknowledge and recognize you know the work of former ministers or former parliamentary representatives acknowledge it and continue to pledge to build on it 
for the benefit of our country, Mr. Speaker. I didn't know that. I was preparing that. Oh, I didn't know that. Mr. Speaker, the theme for this year, the theme for this year's budget, as stated by the Prime Minister, is health and security, the pillars for sustainability. And while I agree, Mr. Deputy Speaker, that in our current environment, it is extremely critical to focus on these pillars. However, no house stands on two pillars. And the minimum should be four, Mr. Speaker, and we should not forget economic viability and social equity as also in the forefront of the work that we have to do as a government. Mr. Speaker, the Prime Minister spoke about the significant allocation to health, which is critical. However, Mr. Speaker, there is still the unanswered question, which is the cost to complete the old St. Jude's. Time and experience, Mr. Speaker, is always the best teacher. And many of us may not be around when the questions are being answered. But I still hold a view, Mr. Speaker, that this administration is making a po colossal political error by not continuing the new building. Because I believe, Mr. Speaker, this building would be a genesis of marketing our country as a prime healthcare destination. Mr. Speaker, I'm hoping the Minister of Health, the member for Viewfort North, could provide some reassurance regarding the number of complaints being received at my office, and I'm sure other members across, across the room, Mr. Speaker, with regards to the various shortages and lack of various basic medical supplies. Mr. Speaker, all of us, every single one of us have been shocked in recent times with the number of what we term sudden deaths. And I'm not speaking about the violent deaths that we have been experiencing, Mr. Speaker. Experiencing, Mr. Speaker. There is a disquietness across the country. And while as a country, our pathologists may be challenged, the question, Mr. Speaker, is there merit for data collection of habits and joining some of the dots with regards to some of the young people who are currently passing so certain? Mr. Speaker, as a parliamentary representative, I am inundated with requests for assistance for various medical procedures. And it is heart-wrenching to know you can only do so much. I applaud the government of Taiwan for agreeing to a portion of the CDP being allocated towards some of these. Because, Mr. Speaker, however, Minister Speaker, the Prime, well, I applaud the Prime Minister. I applaud the Prime Minister, but it is through the Taiwanese funds. Okay, so I applaud the Prime Minister. It's a good initiative. When it's good, you say it's good. We don't always have to be fighting. Okay? So, Mr. Speaker, However, it is only a drop in the bucket. It, Mr. Speaker, only today, Mr. Deputy Speaker, only today, I, I, I'm, I'm tired of telling you, let's move forward, you know. Let's move forward. Let, leave that. Bygones, bygones. Huh? Mr. Speaker, only today, I have received three requests for urgent, urgent medical attention, Mr. Speaker. And Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, I have to commend my friend for Castro South, Mr. Speaker. My friend for Castro South in a recent parliamentary debate, and I, and I told him that, you know, Mr. Speaker. I told him, Mr. Speaker, that he spoke of some of the health challenges that he has also been faced with daily by his constituents. And Mr. Speaker, I also indicated to him that, you know, if he continued speaking from the heart, then maybe his political career is assured in the future because he was, it was very touching when he spoke at the last um, parliament as it relates to the health needs of his constituents, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Deputy Speaker, Mr. Speaker, I am urging the Prime Minister 
to continue to focus speedily on the universal health care package for all. Mr. Speaker, while in office, we completed major upgrades of free health centers in Shurzel, thanks to the World Bank. I'm again requesting for the minister, member for Beaufort North, to continue with the plans for the shelter, especially at the Lafarge Center, for the elderly who leave their homes early to seek medical care, and also to replace the broken and sightly fences, Mr. Speaker. Mrs. Deputy, Mr. Speaker, I think it is very significant that I mentioned to all members on the government side. <clears throat> and, and Mr. Speaker, it is important because the, 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 the Prime Minister in a recent parliamentary debate spoke to when he sends people or constituents to other ministers, you know, that um, they should provide the necessary support. And I, I, I was wondering why would he say that because I cannot imagine the Prime Minister would send a constituent to another member and not get the support. But I also want, Mr. Speaker, to, to duplicate what he's saying because it is very important. As a parliamentary rep, when I make a plea or a reference for a constituent, there should never be a notion that I am seeking help for a supporter. I am seeking help for a constituent because excluding some of our very visible loyalists, as we call them hacks, we never know who some people cast their ballots for. And all of us must respect the, the role of a parliamentarian. Mr. Speaker, the SLP government came into office on the 26th of July, 2021. And at the time, you will recall that the government had to work with a budget that was in effect from the last administration. Mr. Speaker, at every opportunity, the country was reminded, according to the members of the government now, that the country's finances were in a mess. They continue to remind us that they found the country's finances in a mess. They continue to remind us that our borrowings was irresponsible and the government would be challenged in borrowing further. Is it not ironic, Mr. Speaker, that with such a mess on your hands, that the best secretary to the government could have come out and proudly declare that a whole year had passed and the government had not borrowed a cent? Mr. Speaker, I will tell you why. It is because these same irresponsible loans that we were told that were negotiated for the benefit of the country, they were not declined by the administration coming in. In fact, they were used to run the country, Mr. Speaker. The government then came and boast about a 12% and 18% growth in office for their response of being in office for two years. Mr. Speaker, yes. can this government really lay claim to these figures? Yes. Can this government point can this government point to an initiative to substantiate this claim, Mr. Speaker? Mr. Speaker, I am on the record in this house. Mr. Speaker, I am on record in this house. Mr. Speaker, these words are not kind, you know. Mr. Speaker, I am on record in this house in stating that the only direction we could go after COVID is up. And I will say that again, Mr. Speaker. I am on record in this house on stating that the only direction we could go after COVID is up, like most of our neighbors in the Caribbean. Mr. Speaker, I wish to bring your attention to the Economic and Social Review 2022. Mr. Speaker, I turn your attention to page page 11. Mr. Speaker, and I quote the third line from the top. 
St. Lucia's economy robustly continued on a recovery path from the unprecedented and sharp decline in 2020 occasioned by the COVID-19 pandemic, reflecting a V-shaped recovery path. Following annual growth of 12.2% in 2021, preliminary estimates suggest that real GDP grew by 18.1% in 2022, resulting in the stock of real GDP being only 1.1% below pre-pandemic levels. This performance was buoyed by strong activity in the lead tourism sector, supported by the full relaxation of COVID-19 protocols on travel, businesses and recreational activities with broader positive spillover effect on other sectors. Mr. Speaker, you will recall that while in opposition, the current government, then in opposition, expressed alarm at our administration's efforts in gradually opening up the country. You will remember also, Mr. Speaker, the, the, these words, and I quote, the government of St. Lucia is the only government that believes tourism will get back to how it was pre-COVID. The only government in the world that believes that. You know what, Mr. Speaker? I guarantee you that had this government not stopped the ongoing projects when they came into office, the real GDP growth would have easily reflected 25%. Easily reflected 25%. Mr. Speaker, I will quickly segue into tourism. Mr. Speaker, much has been said about who is responsible for the proposed hotel at Sabwisha. Mr. Speaker, it is no secret on an election platform in 2016, the then parliamentary rep for Shuazal Saltibus Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, my good friend, relax yourself. I will, I will, I will, I will again, Mr. Speaker, because I'm speaking to your sector right now, and I want you to listen. Yes, thank you, Mr. Speaker. Much has been said about who is responsible for the proposed hotel at Sabusha. You're just speaking about it. Mr. Speaker, it is no secret on an election platform in 2016, the then parliamentary rep for Shuazel Saltibus indicated that a hotel was coming to Shuazel. As a new candidate, I responded that anything I believe that was for the benefit of the community, I would support. Mr. Speaker, the media is replete with interviews of the challenges I had to face in making any progress or headway on that hotel. Even, Mr. Speaker, from the same people who have supported the initial plan. The rest is history, Mr. Speaker. The developers have changed. The hotel operators have changed. I believe there will be a strong economic impact on our lives in Chuzel Saltibus. And I continue to support the minister in this development. But with a strong caution, and a strong caution, Mr. Speaker, to ensuring that access to the beach is not restricted or compromised. I, I move to the next hotel that was identified in the, in the hotel stock that will be coming. Dream Resort Spa and Zoetry Wellness and Spa Resort. Spa Resort. Mr. Speaker, as the Minister for Investment, when this proposal was brought to my attention, I remember one of the things, because they, at the time they were also involved in a hotel in St. Kitts. Yeah. Well, the point is, the point is they were, they, were, they were involved in a hotel in St. Kitts. So why did you bring them? Because you are just one. Oh, they trust you. Oh, that's why they go. That's why you really much. That's why they use it. Mr. Speaker, Chairman, because of you, I, I thought it necessary, Mr. Speaker, to know who we were dealing with. So, Mr. Speaker, I accepted an invitation to go to China, Mr. Speaker. In fact, Mr. Sp China, I, the tie I'm wearing today is, is from China, Mr. Speaker. 
and to see the operations of that hotel. And I'm very happy, Mr. Speaker, that the current government has continued to support it and it is ongoing and I'm sure it will do great things for the community of the, of, of Beaufort, Nicole, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the Courtrad Marriott Beach Resort. Are you claiming the Courtrad Marriott Beach Resort? It, it is, it's not necessary to me, Mr. Speaker, who claims the project, but I find too many times we try to take ownership of something which is for the benefit of the country, Mr. Speaker. It's a pity the, 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 the Prime Minister stepped out at this point because I really wanted the Prime Minister to pay particular attention to, to my next um, 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 focus, Mr. Speaker. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, Sandals. The Prime Minister congratulated the Sandals Group for their 30 years of existence in St. Lucia. Mr. Speaker, I applaud him for that recognition because a company of that size employing just under 2,000 staff and a major purchaser of our agricultural output should be given their flowers. And I will make it very clear, I hold no brief for sandals. I don't eat and drink at sandals for free, Mr. Speaker. I speak to the value of sandals because there are a number of my constituents working at this hotel. Mr. Speaker, I will be the first to encourage them to provide better pay and settle their payables quicker. Mr. Speaker, I also want to speak on the role that Sandal plays in our communities, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I remember in 2019, 20, 2020, I got a call from the Sandals Foundation, indicated to me that they were interested in setting up a music lab in Schozel, but they needed my assistance to retrofit a room. Immediately, Mr. Speaker, some of my CDP funds was used towards that. We have an established music room at the Reunion Primary School, Mr. Speaker. And I'm very happy to see that through the Basic Needs Trust Fund, an additional $150,000 will be going towards that um, music um, 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 facility, which will include building of additional cupboards and additional musical equipment, Mr. Speaker. So, Mr. Speaker, I say all of that, Mr. Speaker, because there continues to be some misinformation from some quarters in this government that the past administration gave Sandals Group $24 million. Mr. Speaker, I beg your indulgence because I would like, if you wish it to be a document of the House, I would gladly make it, but it's available in, in the, with the Cabinet Secretary because they were all cabinet documents, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, I wish to draw your attention to a cabinet conclusion number 233 of 2015, the Sandals Group of Companies Outstanding Withholding Tax. This cabinet conclusion indicates that this item was withdrawn. And there's a note by the former cabinet secretary. It says, the former cabinet issued no directive with respect to the 24 million that remains unpaid up to that date. That was in April 2015. Mr. Speaker, I go to a cabinet memo, 16th of November 2015, establishment of an incentive regime and associated responsibilities between the government of St. Lucia and the Sandals Group. Mr. Speaker, I will not go through the entire cabinet, but I, I just want to to speak that this cabinet conclusion speaks to a number of concessions granted to the Sandals Group and it speaks to cabinet further approves 100% exemption from the requirement under section 76 and schedule 3 of the Income Tax Act 15.02 to deduct withholding tax from payments to and charges from non-resident group and other companies for a period of 10 years from 1st June 2010 to 31st May 2020. Mr. Speaker, I then move to Cabinet Memo 2017, Mr. Speaker, coming from the Inland Revenue Department, Mr. Speaker, and it's, I, I, again, I will not read everything, Mr. Speaker, but I can always make documents available. 2.2, the Inland Revenue Department raised withholding tax assessments in the absence of withholding tax payments on insurance premiums expense in the financial statement of the operating companies 
over the period 2001 to 2009, excluding 2007, which was statute bad, when the assessments were raised and therefore no assessment were raised for that year. Otherwise, the operating companies are all benefiting from concessions via cabinet conclusion to exempt income tax and withholding tax from the income year 2010 forward. And, and just, Mr. Speaker, to explain to St. Lucia that um, with regards to what withholding tax is all about, it's the deduction of tax payments made to non-residents where a person makes a payment to a non-resident or where a branch of a non-resident company makes payments to its head office or to some other branch or associate outside St. Lucia. Mr. Speaker, I quote 2.7. In 2009, the, go the government revoked all concessions between 1992 and 2008 that did not have an expiration or terminal date. 2.9. In 2013, the group received general concessions for corporate income tax and withholding tax for 15 years and 10 years, respectively, each from 1st January 2013. In late 2013, the 2013 concession document was amended for the general withholding tax concession to be made retroactive to June 1st, 2010, for a period of 10 years to 31st May 2020. 2.11, withholding tax waiver granted in December 2013 for the period commencing June 1st, 2010. Um, and uh, the, the, the 3.8, it must be noted that the cabinet conclusion issued to exempt the withholding tax of the group for the period of 10 years was cabinet conclusion number 188 of 2014, commencing 1st January 2014. It says that there's, however, um, this cabinet conclusion was amended by cabinet conclusion number 726 of 2014, which specified a backdated period of 1st June 2010 to 31st May 2020. So there... The, 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 what, what Inland Revenue is, was telling the government, the last administration, that there's nothing to suggest that an approval has been given to waive withholding tax between the period 2001 2010. However, the government, SLP government at the time, gave the same withholding tax concession from 2010 onwards, and we as well were um, also given withholding tax. Now, I believe something may have slipped into the crack, Mr. Speaker. So what Inland Revenue was asking the government at the time, the last administration, given that the withholding tax assessments are in keeping with the legislative provisions, the taxes liability remains outstanding. Therefore, the following options may be considered by cabinet. Either one, cabinet remits the taxes under section 140 of the ITA, or cabinet grants an exemption for the period 2001-2009. Cabinet is invited to issue its determination on the Sunnels Resort International Group withholding tax dispute for the period 2001 to 2009. So this has been a long, long outstanding matter, Mr. Speaker. So, Mr. Speaker, finally, I want to draw your attention to right, a, a media report from Sunnels, Mr. Speaker, and I will quote and I, that, I, that I could also make available to you, Mr. Speaker, is there at September 8, 2018. In a statement issued yesterday, the Caribbean's largest hotel and tourism operation noted what he described as sustained efforts to try and tarnish the good name and reputation by, of our company by parties who continue to misrepresent the issue of a 24 million withholding tax claim by the Inland Revenue Department of St. Lucia on insurance costs, a matter which was finally and appropriately resolved in 2017. According to the statement, it is important to note that US 15 million, or over 62% of the claim, was in penalties and interest after it was allowed to continue to drag out by the former administration. The hotel chain said the issue of the withholding tax assessment was specifically raised, and despite assurances from the then Prime Minister and Deputy Prime Minister that the matter would be addressed, there was no communication from government to Inland Revenue which continued to accumulate significant interest on the old assessment. The statement also said it is important to indicate that there was never any legal efforts to collect these taxes claimed to be due. The statement insisted that both the former Prime Minister and the Deputy Prime Minister agreed that the incentives would be granted. Both were fully cognizant at the time that this included addressing the withholding tax issue. It is also said that since the former Prime Minister was fully aware of the circumstances surrounding this matter, it is very unfortunate that members of his party are among those being allowed to consistently misrepresent this issue to the public of St. Lucia. This dispute with inland revenue over withholding taxes 
on insurance premiums was an old and exceptional matter that required resolution if Sunders Resort International was able to finance new investment on the island. Indeed, the only purpose served by delaying it was to have derailed the expansion works that were planned for the Sunders Grand St. Lucian. The Sunders Resort says the resolution of this issue last year has now allowed us to proceed with plans to invest close to US $250 million in a new hotel, including real estate, which will provide 1,000 construction jobs over two years and over 600 full-time jobs when finished for the people of St. Lucia, not to mention the many farmers, taxi drivers, store operators, vendors, etc., who will benefit from the additional activity. According to Sanders, in spite of the continued effort to distort the issue with the apparent intention of causing harm, to Sandals Resorts and its 1,800 team members, 98% of whom are St. Lucians, we wish to assure both our team members and the people of St. Lucia that Sandal Resort remains a true friend and partner who this year celebrated its 25th anniversary in St. Lucia. We assure you further that the Sandals Resort in St. Lucia, as we are in all territories, fully compliant with all taxes, statutory reductions, and payments in line with what is granted to us, which have been similarly granted to many hotels in St. Lucia. The statement concluded, we are and will remain committed to the growth and development of St. Lucia and its people, and will continue to play our role in the enhancement of the island's hospitality sector. Mr. Speaker, I said all of that, hoping, and that's why I really hope the Prime Minister was there, that this matter would be settled once and for all, Mr. Speaker, because all the, the, the expansion that we've seen happening there with Sanders is as a direct result of cabinet in 2017 um, passing this thing. So, Mr. Speaker, I really hope, Mr. Don't Speaker, that this thing, that this thing comes to an end, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, I can make it a document of that. I can, I can definitely make it a document. In fact, um, yeah, definitely. You want to tell me what to do? You can't even write your own life. You want to tell me what to do? Member for Swazil, you need to make it a document of ours only if you wish to. You're not obliged. No, 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 I, I, have, no pro I have no problem. Because are they, this is the, 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 the media correspondence. No, no, I was, I was, asked, I was asked for it. Okay. Yeah, but I just I, want you to be aware that yes, no, I am you're not in that title. Okay. Yeah. And the cabinet um, and memos, you all can hear. Yeah. Mr. Speaker, I am encouraged with the government continuation of the village tourism, community tourism. And I'm hoping that my community will be included in the expansion plans, as under the last administration, discussions were well underway, including a model farm concept drive in part, driven in part by Invest St. Lucia. I, I, you, you came in too late. You came too late. I really wish you were there. Okay. Mr. Mr. Speaker, I noticed both the Minister of Agriculture and the Prime Minister gave very fleeting commentary to the works being undertaken at the Schwozel Fish Landing site. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, this is a huge thing, Mr. Speaker. Six million dollars grant funds from the government and people of Japan. We must celebrate that, Mr. Speaker. No longer will Desmond Collingwood be coming to Schwozel with his camera, a news report on the plight of the fishermen having to wade through cold water early in the mornings, having their vessels damaged. Mr. Speaker, I note how difficult it is to obtain grant funds in the environment. On behalf of the community of Chosel Saltibus, I wish to thank JICA and the government and people of Japan, and may our relationship continue to flourish as you have been a good friend, especially to our fishing sector. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, the, the member also spoke about Sagasam. Yeah, Mr. Speaker, the Sagasam issue is one that we, we really need to look at because, you know, the reports indicating that there is a very huge mass heading our way. And as much as possible, we need to try, Mr. Speaker, um, to see how we can avoid that. Already, my good friend Jeremiah, is suffering, member for Mikud North, is suffering with his fishermen. And, and, and it is, you know, we need to, we need to, you know, to look to see. I, I'm, I'm aware that Coconut Bay has has purchased some equipment to help them with dealing with the Sagasa. Maybe we could speak to them and see how they maybe can support the government in in, in this. Instance. Mr. Speaker, under the last administration, 
we had invested over $200,000 in replacing normal pipes to pressure pipes from the 120,000 gallon tank which provides irrigation to several farmers in the community of the Elsa, La Pointe, Waden, etc. This tank is what can be referred to as the golden egg because of the value it brings to our farmers. I am asking that the government of St. Lucia show their commitment to agriculture and continue the project of continuing to replace these pipes, um, Mr. Speaker. It is extremely, extremely important. Mr. Speaker, many of our farmers continue to struggle with the high cost of input. And while I have not seen it listed, I'm hoping that the proposed 2.5% health and security levy does not affect our farmers, Mr. Speaker. And Mr. Speaker, as I speak to the 2.5% levy, I just wish to make some comments on it. Um, I believe it is very early to address, Mr. Speaker, or to comment on this new level. Because I spoke to my friends at Customs and they could not even have provided the clarity that was required. So I would like to um, speak to the Prime Minister because I have been, been inundated with calls and a lot of people are making inquiries. And I wish to share some of the inquiries with the Prime Minister through you, Mr. Speaker. And I'm hoping that some serious consideration and reflection is done before we introduce it. Mr. Speaker, the question of how the levy will be calculated is critical. Is it going to be CIF plus the environmental levy plus import duty plus service charge plus VAT? Or will it be CIF, import duties, service charge, VAT, environmental levy? It is, it is critical that we know that, Mr. Speaker, so I'm hoping you will clarify when you, when, when you are rebutting Honorable Prime Minister. Have there been sufficient consultation on items not to be affected? And I speak example because um, personal hygiene items, Mr. Speaker, personal hygiene items, critical. Will this levy affect the people who order online? Amazon, Shine, etc., Sheen, etc. People currently enjoying concessions like the manufacturers, how will they be affected? Will fuel be affected? The, 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 the levy also speaks to services. Are we speaking to imported services or is it local services? These things are very unclear, Mr. Speaker. These are just some of the many inquiries that I could, Mr. Speaker, have the right, I could have directed these inquiries, you know, like my friends opposite do with when they were in opposition with some serious political fervor. But I choose not to because I'm very sincere in, 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 in the inquiries that I'm making, Mr. Speaker. So. So, Mr. Speaker, I move to the to the levy. I move to. Why? It's not written in your speech. It's not. It's not there. It's not there. The levy? I don't listen to them to, 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 to a lot of, and I don't follow a lot of these things. Okay. Okay. So, Mr. Speaker, I I welcome the. 50% levy on the issue of cigarettes, I think it was, cigarettes. The duty on, yeah, on, on but, and, and, and the, the, the Minister of Health will agree that in recent times we have had a very significant increase in the number of COPD deaths. And Mr. Speaker, while I support that, tax on the cigarette smoking, or, or cigarette, sorry, there is tobacco. There is, there, is a, there is a concern, and I think we need to be very sure that, uh, very certain that we get on top of that very early. And that's the issue of contraband and the black market. Because, Mr. and not just that, Mr. Speaker, there's the issue of people who will want to experiment, and this could cause even more harm you know, with, with this whole issue, Mr. Speaker. Mrs. Ex experiment. You know, when I was growing up, tabak. Yeah, tabak. And, you know, my grandfather used to roll that in his capstan tin. You know, people who want to, there's no filter. You understand? Yeah. Yeah. So, 
Tabak. <laughs> I know if it's jab, but I know it's a tabak. <laughs> On the subject of water, Mr. Speaker, I was pleased to note that an application made to the BNTF grant funds while I was in office has been approved. And a 100,000 glass fuse steel bolted tank will be erected to replace a 50,000 gallon tank rubble wall concrete tank which is over 40 years old and leaks and have to be consistently repaired. The tank located in Victoria serves the community of Montjac, Belleville, Darquitain, Foncarco, Ravino, Montgouge, Marte, Pognon, Diamond, Fancy, Boiden, and all the way to my roots in Lamaze. The cost of this project is in excess of $600,000. I am hoping we've doubled the current capacity, the once a week scenario that many of these communities face will come to an end. I think it is critical, Mr. Speaker, that I repeat that component of my presentation in Creole. Mr. Speaker, mais bien content. En application qui était faite pour BNTF, les mettait en, en, en pouvoir. Mais bien content, yo approve application ça là. Et qu'on go tank, en go tank glow, yo kai construct Victoria Choisey, bâti. Victoria Choisey pour replacer vieux tank là, nous nou li Victoria qui presque um, 40 l'année. Vieux vie tank ça là, t'es qu'à 50 gallons de l'eau. 50. 50. 50,000. 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50, 50 gallons de l'eau. 50 000 gallons de l'eau. Et tant que neuf là, quand il y a 100 000 gallons de l'eau. Donc, ça est deux fois la quantité de l'eau qui est avant. Et tout le monde, mon Jack, Belleville, Dakitain, Foncaco, Ravino, mon Gouge, Martin, Pognon, des mondes, Foncillou, Boiden, et tout le côté que Wassim, maman, est sorti de la masse. Kai Jouen Glo, plus souvent. So, ça y est, mais bien, bien, bien content. So, Mr. Speaker, Wasco is life. As Wasco Mat Moto says, water is life. As Wasco Moto indicates, Mr. Speaker. And it is very, very unfortunate, Mr. Speaker, in our age of enlightenment, so many communities are struggling to receive this basic need. This is a failure of successive administrations. And Mr. Speaker, I want to take the opportunity, regardless of what some may feel, I want to congratulate the new CEO of WASCO on her appointment. And I do hope, Mr. Speaker, I do hope that she has the tenacity of her father to get things done. Because, you know, too many times, you know, we have had political interference, you know, from the political um, directorate with regards to the managing of, of, of Wasco, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, it's a pity that the parliamentary rep for G40 South is not in this afternoon, but I'm not sure if you're aware, but I am actually his parliamentary representative. And Mr. Speaker, you know, sometimes your, your constituents, they, they, they give you pressure. And they, they, my constituent constituents consistently gives me pressure for the water supply in South Vegas. And so, Mr. Speaker, in May 2020, I remember walking the inner, hill val inner hills and valleys of Saltibus with Wasco personnel to visit the water catchment. Because, Mr. Speaker, a community like Saltibus with such an extensive river network should not be without water. Mr. Speaker, had you been the one to have visited, you would have, you would have definitely um, been surprised with the catchment, Mr. Speaker. You would have been very concerned. When we went to the truck, to the to the to the to the, to the, um, the dam, Mr. Speaker, where the water is collected, we went there with some forest guides from the community, 
And when we saw the condition of where the water is being um, collected, Mr. Speaker, it was, it was very glaring that this was not adequate to serve the needs of people, Mr. Speaker. So we went further to another location where I was told that even in the worst of droughts, the strong, and f the strong flow remains. Mr. Speaker, at the time I was convinced that we could receive major voluntary support from the, com the, 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 the community if we had to carry pipes. I remember actually posting something online with regards to that, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the situation has worsened. And it is not a nice feeling, you know, when I go to funerals in the community of Saldibus for people to accost me and tell me, sell bagay me vlese dlo. Mani bavle and yeko, bai dlo sa saldibis, you know, siya kwevche. And Mr. Speaker, I notice we have in, in, in our midst today um, my opponent during the last elections. And Mr. Speaker, I, I remember one of the campaign promises that she made to the people of Saldibus was that she would rectify the water issues in Saldibus, Mr. Speaker. Now, while she is not, while she is not the elected representative for she was a salty bus. She's a member of cabinet. And I'm sure she can influence the decisions of cabinet. I said, I said, yes, but it's, there, there, there's what, I can tell you what I did. We replaced the pipes on, on the ground in Salty Bus Road. That's one, that's one component. That's one component. So, Mr. Speaker, we have the BNTF 11 coming up, and I'm urging, I'm, a, I'm urging my good friend in the gallery to, to make an application to, to, and she has links, you know, she has links at Wasco, so I'm sure she can, she can um, make things happen, Mr. Speaker. My girlfriend. <laughs> <laughs> Mr. Speaker, the government has placed heavy emphasis on a youth economy and touting it as a novel idea. Mr. Speaker, I am happy that the government is creating a continued emphasis on the youth. Although, Mr. Speaker, I believe that significant funds allocated in, an, in administration could have gone directly in youth for support had it been maintained in an existing agency in the government's um, 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 list of agencies, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, if you are not aware, I will provide you with an insight of some activities with regards to youth and small businesses and medium-sized enterprise businesses while I was the Minister of Commerce and also in office, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the last administration had agreed to repurpose World Bank funds during COVID to provide loan grant facilities to small, medium-sized enterprises to the tune of $5 million, and that money was lodged with the St. Lucia Development Bank. There was also NIC funds of $20 million, where $15 million was supposed to have gone through housing, and $5 million to medium-sized enterprises for loans. Provision of US 3.1 million repurposed from the Climate Adaptation Financing Facility into blended loan grant assistance ranging between five to $25,000 for micro and small medium enterprises with a focus on food security and digital technologies. A targeted audience of 1,200 to 1,500 was the was 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 the the reach that that we are trying to reach, Mr. Speaker? There was also the waiver on taxes on interest earnings of financial institutions, and that was to encourage our banks and credit unions to provide much needed capital to small and micro enterprises because they were they didn't want to touch them, they were afraid of them. So we wanted to give them an incentive to to to. to embrace the small businesses, give them loans, and on the profits that you make, we will provide you with some tax incentives. Almost $8 million was pumped into the agricultural sector for inputs and related items. We also amended the Finance Act, Mr. Speaker, to provide tax incentives for the creative sector 
the IT sector, the entertainment sector, health and wellness sector, and the professional sector. The member for Castries North will be very familiar with that because I remember, you know, he and I having a conversation about a constituent of his who was selling snow cones or ice cream and he wanted assistance for the person to be able to bring down the cat. And so this is something that was in existence. I'm happy that I heard the Prime Minister indicated that he included spots in that, um, in that package. So we continue on the good thing that, that, that was started, Mr. Speaker. So, you know, I, 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 I sometimes, Mr. Speaker, I'm disturbed when we try to erase history. Mr. Speaker, we also had the boost program. Maybe my friend from Castro South will one day tell me why that program was cancelled. Because that was to assist early stage MSME to help develop strong business models and growth strategies with the goal of job creation and economic development. The aim was to target but not limited to rural and poverty stricken communities, essentially giving them the boost they require to be successful. Boost partnered with most key business support organizations and was the first entrepreneurial organization to link education, innovation and qualification in developing MSMEs. The partners included Invest St. Lucia, Export St. Lucia, SLDB, SBDC, Sir Community College, St. Lucia Small Business. And Mr. Speaker, this program was working with both regional and international organizations like the Global Green Growth Institute, OECS, UN Development Program. And Mr. Speaker, by the government canceling the boost program, these organization project units had to look other areas to provide support. Member for Suzelle South, you have 10 minutes left. Give me 15 minutes. 15. Could Member for Mikut South. Could you get them? Mr. Speaker, I'd like to invoke section 3210 and ask that the member from Choiselle South be given another 15 minutes. Honourable members, the question is that standing order 3210 be invoked to allow the member for Suzelle South an additional 15 minutes in which to conclude his presentation. I now put the question, as many as of that opinion say aye, as many as of a country opinion say no, I think the ayes have it, the ayes have it. Proceed, member. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Thank you, colleagues. I'm a bit disappointed that my colleague to my, life, my, my left did not respond to Mr. <laughs> to my left, you run, you run. <laughs> Um, yeah, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, the boost program was going to go to schools, communities, you know, to provide, you know, education as to the whole business um, enterprise and going into your own business. There were, Mr. Speaker, there was also the after school program, Mr. Speaker, targeting about 495 young kids for vulnerable communities. Marsha was in there, Millet, uh, Vifort South, uh, Peru. And the intention, Mr. Speaker, was to avoid them from falling into delinquent behavior. That was partnership with national lotteries and the football association. For the most part, Mr. Speaker, this program was stopped. And, and, and through you, Mr. Mr. Speaker, I really urge the PM to revisit, because um, that was a very um, you know, uh, critical and successful program, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, many, many will welcome the two-year VAT relief on billing materials. And the opposition is pleased that the government has finally started to pay attention to the calls from the opposition for, the, for relief. We hope, Mr. Speaker, that the reduction, we urge the government, we, we actually urge the government, Mr. Speaker, to provide similar relief where more people are impacted, and that is at the fuel pump. We note the government collected $70 million above what was budgeted in excise tax, with plans to collect an additional 100 million in this financial year. So a government that pro promotes putting the people first, we know it is possible. Mr. Speaker, I note that there is no specific mention to road refurbishment or renovation in my community. I have, however, received correspondence from the Ministry of Infrastructure, and I hope that the government will pay particular attention in completing the Gayaba Pakistan Road, which we started, Mr. Speaker. Mr. Speaker, yes, I, 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 no, I will, I, I will get there, get there. I speak to a road, I'm not speaking to drains. 
I'm not speaking of drains. Mr. Speaker, it is so deplorable that the community cannot be, be serviced by garbage collection. The member for Viewfort South, as Prime Minister, had ensured drainage works was completed. However, Mr. Speaker, because of the height of the drainage, all the runoff water from heavy rain flow goes onto the road, and this, Mr. Speaker, has recreated areas that are just impassable. Mr. Speaker, my community has some ongoing economic activity, a direct spillover from my term in office. I hope the government does not use this as a barometer not to allocate resources for the continued development of this constituency. Work which was started on our playing fields, resource centers, washrooms and playing fields, facilities for for Delsa playing fields, there was a drawing, Mr. Speaker, that we hope the government can continue to, to work on. Refer, refurbishment of the Saldivas Community Center, land acquisition, which was meant to create green spaces and recreational parks, and to provide title for homeowners. There is a development thrust, Mr. Speaker, and interest from many business entities, and I urge the government not to allow this momentum to fade not to allow assets that have been constructed to deteriorate, Mr. Speaker. Shosal Saltibus is the foundation for many successful and outstanding sons and daughters of this country. Many in this part parliament, including one serving and two past prime ministers, boast of their roots in this blessed community. My friend from Kasri South has a direct lineage from Shosal, Mr. Saltibus. Many want to make it home like our current speaker. <laughs> Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, I am asking that this government let progress reign. I thank you, Mr. Speaker.